Kel, the faces of the city's homeless population are changing once again. Two thirds of the people staying at the city's only overnight family shelter have jobs and go to work. The Salvation Army is also housing nearly an equal number of women and men now and welcoming more families with children. The Salvation Army is expecting to see another shift soon. If Governor Kemp signs Senate Bill 23 into law, which bans homeless camps and holds uh, local governments accountable, the state provides county governments, including Richmond County, with money to help people get into housing. Georgia leaders now want to know where those tax dollars are going and how successful local homeless programs are at helping our most vulnerable. Senior investigative reporter Liz Owens breaks down what this means for Augusta, Richmond County. The pandemic hit families like a train. Lives once on the track out of poverty suddenly came to a screeching halt. This is something that the Salvation Army people we have talked to have never seen in any of their areas. Derek Duggan is the director of development for the Salvation Army of Augusta. The demographics of who the Salvation Army is serving has changed dramatically in the last five years and even more dramatically in the last year. The increase in families, the increase in intact families, uh, father, mother, Full More family than two unit. Wow. Yeah, full family units coming into the shelter. According to data from the Salvation Army's Homeless Management Information System, or HMIS, the number of men versus women staying at the shelter is nearly 50-50. The number of children and the number of intact families, both mom and dad, is higher than ever before. So why more women? Why more families? Primarily, it's the affordability of housing and the increase in housing costs with um, their income not matching those costs. But more than two thirds of the people who stay in our shelter, men, women uh, combined, are working. And many of them are working third shifts, which the Salvation Army allows them to sleep during the day. But the rate of pay versus the rate of housing costs are not comparable, leading to more people needing a place to live. Also leading to more homeless camps throughout the county and more people with nowhere to go sitting in parking lots like this one across from Sacred Heart. People that are not in the system are not able to get any help beyond that day. And that is what we are really encouraging the Salvation Army as well as the other agencies involved in the Homeless Task Force are to get casework involved and develop a plan based on their individual circumstances, whether it be addiction, whether it be mental health, inflated housing costs, job skills training, any other elements that are in that are uh, uh, stopping them from success. HMIS is the program local agencies and governments use to track homeless individuals and the services provided to them. It's also how state leaders soon hope to hold counties accountable. Senate Bill 23 mandates local governments to undergo a state audit of public spending on homeless programs and systems. If made into law, it would also ban public camping and prohibit hospitals, local governments, and local authorities from dropping off homeless individuals in counties other than such persons' county of residence. A common practice the I-Team found happens in Richmond County. Not only did we meet people on the streets telling us an agency from a neighboring county dropped them off here. I just want to go home to my house. But we also uncovered a trail of bus tickets where the state sends inmates leaving prison to Augusta, Richmond County, too. Senate Bill 23 would allow the Attorney General of Georgia to go after agencies dumping homeless off outside of their home county. In the meantime, the Salvation Army needs help helping. They're asking for other nonprofits, volunteers, anyone wanting to make a difference to come to the shelter on the last Friday of every month for a resource fair and food distribution. The whole community needs to come together and provide incentives for receiving the services and a plan for success for the future. And to ultimately help families and others to get back on the right track. Senate Bill 23 is on the governor's desk. If made into law, the first audit of local money spent on homeless services will take place in December.